Okay, so today we're putting uh, new shocks on the ND, and uh, as you've seen in a previous video, we've got some really nice JRI shocks to go on here. But the first thing we got to do is get the old Bill Steins off. So we'll go through the steps on how to do that and change the shocks over. So uh, as you'll see, Bill Stein shocks in place. The first thing we're going to do is remove the brackets holding the brake lines and the ABS sensors in place so nothing gets damaged while we're pulling and tugging other items. So pretty simple 12 millimeter socket. It's kind of nice working on a somewhat new car for a change and not dealing with super yucky greasy parts. Um, so that was for the brake hose which is now free. ABS line, which we had to use last night, the ABS to avoid a deer. <laughs> ABS hose or ABS lines free. And next thing we'll do is uh, go ahead and remove one of the sway bar end links. We will be doing the sway bar as well. Um, so end link bolt, which that is looking like a 14. Just undoing the uh, the end link, what that allows is the suspension to articulate independently from side to side as we're working on things. A little, a little tough to get that out, but not too bad. Just kind of work it back and forth. And next thing we'll do is the lower shock bolt, which should be a 17 millimeter. If uh, it looks like they're carrying all of these sizes over from the previous generation cars. may need to be driven out with a drift. So what we're doing here is using just a small blunt end drift to put in the hole. I've got a little hammer that I made back in machine shop class many years ago. And out pops the bolt. So next on the agenda, we have to go up top, and if I'm a good betting man, it'll be 14 millimeter as well, which we've got some stuff in the way here first. Um, looks like we've got to take a crossbar off, and the lovely sound tube's in the way, so we'll have to remove that as well. We can just swing that out of the way and now we have access to shock bolts which should be these three and go with a deep well.
At this point in time, the shock is loose, the coilover is loose, but we wouldn't be able to get it out because we don't have enough swing of all the suspension components. So what we'll have to do with 17 millimeter again is remove, there's a couple of ways of doing this. The Mazda shop manual tells you to separate the upper ball joint. That seems to be the difficult way of doing it when you could potentially damage the ball joint and really all you've got to do is take these two upper control arm bolts loose and everything will swing out of the way. So we'll do that next. And the beautiful thing here, actually it looks like I didn't even need the wrench. It appears that those nuts are welded to the subframe, which is a vast improvement over the previous Miata had a single large bolt running through here. The RX-7 third gen has a very similar suspension design to this and you have to hold the nuts. So kudos to Mazda for improving the design. And as you can see, everything just wants to fall out now. One ND front coilover assembly. So what we're going to do is take the top hats and springs off of this shot. Um, this is probably not an approved method, but I've done it before and it's quite effective. Uh, pretty much use a old moving blanket or a quilt or anything like that to put the shock inside. Make sure you have gloves on, use an impact. You can back this nut off with the impact and basically you have some stored energy here with the springs but that gets absorbed here inside of everything so don't try this at home <laughs> don't try this at home kids may I get back And as you can see, it's separated without much drama. So now we have all the pieces and we'll have to build up another shot. So here are the new shots. As you can see, they're packaged very well. Um, these are the front with attached dyno sheets. So now what we've got to do, these, uh, these shocks are set up for a two and a half inch ID spring. We have to run the stock springs. So a couple of things we gotta do there, flip the adjuster over so we have a nice flat perch for the carceps spring perches uh, to mount to. Those are a uh, simulation of the stock perch. Their CNC machine look like a nice quality piece. So we have to spin the adjuster off and add those. So uh, you can see the two shock bodies sitting there and we ran into our first problem. The JRI shock body is larger 
then the car steps uh, spring purchase will accept. As you can see, we slide it on here. As soon as it hits the threaded portion, it stops. So, uh, using our calipers, we can measure. These are about two inches, 50 thousandths ID. Our shock body is about two inches, 90 thousandths. So we're uh, to have a little bit of clearance. We're about 50 thousandths of an inch away. So these are gonna have to go to the machine shop. Luckily I work at one of those and uh, have the IDs opened up a, a smidge. So the nice uh, anodized finish on the inside will go away, but they'll fit our new shots. So until we get that rectified, we're at a standstill. So what better way to uh, break in your nice shiny new ND than taking a cutoff wheel to it? Yeah. So looks like we're cutting a sway bar out because that is the easiest way to remove it. The new carceps bar can go in without much fuss, but uh, the operating procedure for removing this is a real pain in the ass and well, we ain't dealing with it. so. We don't plan on reusing this bar. If we ever go back to stock with it, then there's plenty of used bars out there on the market that you can be finding for under 100 bucks. So we're going with an easy button. So here we go. the bolts off and we'll be ready to snatch this dude out. The dog doesn't like the <laughs> grinder. No. <laughs> I don't like the grinder either. <laughs> hey that looks like the swipe bar I broke. Mm -hmm. I could have broke that for you. <laughs> that was pretty drama free too. So. Stop saying that. <laughs> you need an extension probably. Looks that way. shock and spring out because we're doing the, uh, the shock upgrade so it makes things a little easier so I can see all the way through there now and hopefully get this little dude out although it looks like we might need to take the bushings off so 
ABS sensor brown. This would be a lot easier if the bushing weren't on there. effort would have made things easier but there it is one cut so it looks like the easiest way to put this on is going to be to attach the brackets first and then feed the, uh, the bar through from one side attach the other bracket and then feed it back through the other uh, the other side. Should probably consult the instructions. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's a bit of a uh, like a puzzle to put this thing on. You've got to put the right side sway bar bracket on first, slide the bar through, put the left side bracket on, on the bar, slide it over the studs. You can then tighten the brackets down. Make sure you slide the, uh, the clamping collars on either side, even the bar up side to side. Uh, I used a pair of calipers to do that. And then put the ends on the bar and that's where we're at right now uh, the collars have been tightened up the ends of the bars have been tightened up check and make sure both sides of your your sway bar arms are equal to do that i basically just put them up to where it was parallel it's touching the upper control arm the other side looks exactly the same so that let me know everything was pretty much even so now we've got end links we just need to attach the end links. Um, that's uh, pretty much the last piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna start with the, the bar and hole three, and uh, which is the middle one, and we'll tune from there. So we've already put one of the shocks together. Uh, you can see the finished product there. We'll do the other side now. Uh, we're using the bump stops that came with the JRI shocks. So first thing we have to do, um, we had to drill out the upper retaining washer uh, for 16 millimeter shaft, much larger than pretty much anything anyone uses. Um, so. We can now start putting things back together. The, uh, the tough part's getting everything clocked properly. Uh, getting the spring compressed enough, which it doesn't look like it is yet. So, um, as I mentioned, you've got the lower bushing rests on the uh, spacer there that JRI provides and then we need to put the shock boot, which has also got an isolator pad on it, into the shock. And I have marked that so I know where the end of it is so I can make sure that it's seated like it should be. And then the upper shock mount with the upper bushing. We'll stand it up so I can see things better. In the retaining washer and then the nut. And at that point we're uh, we're pretty well tight, um, hand tight anyway. Uh, so now I'm going to work on clocking the shot to the spring before I release the tension off of everything. Then after I do that, I'll tighten the nut down using a half inch and 15 sixteenths wrench, half inch to hold the shaft, 15 sixteenths to tighten everything down. So 
if I use our other shock as an example, I can also use the spring perch, uh, uh, the upper or the upper mount to help clock the perch because I know where it should be in relationship. You can spin these a little bit after you're assembled, but it's obviously easier without tension on it. So that's pretty close right there. And I'll back off. Do a little of one at a time. So this is why I hate spring compressors because they never line up where you want them to be. And it looks like I'll take this off by spring compressors off. Um, everything is in alignment. My end of my spring lines up with the mark that I made. I've checked the, the alignment of everything. Again, you can tweak it a little bit as you're trying to put it into the car, but getting it as close as possible helps. And so now you have to tighten the upper nut down. Okay. So uh, again, you gotta use two wrenches if I grab the right wrench. Um, holding the shock. If I can get it in there, I did this on the last one to get it started. It is a, uh, a snug, snug fit. Uh, two wrenching it. Get it started. Basically, uh, you just continue doing this until you kind of feel the rubber uh, shock mounts bottom out. You'll get some pretty good tension um, on the wrench. That means you're tight. And it's a lock nut, so it's not going to back off. You can see everything together nice and tight. So you can see we've got our assembled shock here. Don't forget the little anti-squeak spacer, plastic spacer. Can't tell you how many times I've put shocks on Miatas and forgot those only to see them laying on the workbench after I got done and take it all back apart to put them back in. So um, this is all assembled. Uh, spring perches set at the proper height for C Street, match those up with the OE Billsteins, uh, the stock upper uh, top hats with the stock bushings. We did have to drill out the, the washer on top to accept the rather large shaft of the JRI shot. So these are pretty easy to get in. So when we go to install this, you can just kind of feed it through, watch the paint, push the lower control arm down. You can then slide everything up in place. Just grabbing the uh, shock, putting it pretty much where it belongs, and grab a bolt for one of the control arms. It is now fighting me with the shot. This was a lot easier on the other side. Once you get a bolt started, life's kind of a lot easier. Everything kind of holds in place. Get the other bolt started. And 
and really at that point you're just reattaching everything you've unattached you can see at the top we're not through um, at the top we'll have to lower the car down a little bit to get that I'm just reattaching the ABS sensor reattach the brake line to the control arm and we have our lower shock bolt just down here and as I position that I want to go ahead and stick those through at the top Other than the top, putting the top nuts on the uh, top hat and tightening everything to spec, that's pretty much a shock install on an ND on the front. So we had a little trouble on the rears. Um, we got them and in inspecting everything, actually went so far as to mount the spring on one of them. I lined the spring perches up. I realized I had to compress the spring a lot further for the JRI shock than the Bilstein, so that raised the red flag, and I started taking measurements. It was at that point when we discovered the rear shocks weren't legal. They were, we get plus or minus one inch on extended length, they were about two inches difference in extended length, shorter. So not only were they Ill illegal, um, they probably would have caused us to raise a rear wheel and uh, lose traction in the rear of the car well, the torsion differential pretty much means you have an open diff at that point if you ever lift a tire. So those are back to JRI. Uh, they are reworking those shocks. Uh, they're increasing the body length one inch and the shaft length one inch. So they will be pretty much right on with the OE bill steins. And uh, hopefully we'll get those back in a few days and get them on the car. In the meantime, I'm going to stick the bill steins back on the rear so we can get the car lined up this weekend. But it'll have JRIs on the front and Bill Stein's on the rear for now.